All right, what's up everyone and uh, welcome to the video. Today here with Raoul Plicat. Thanks for taking the time. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> nice to have you here. Um, yeah, I think if this was a German podcast, then you probably wouldn't even need an introduction uh, because everyone from the German market who has at least been in the you know, like coaching consulting space, online marketing space, uh, probably knows you and is maybe uh, even using some of your products and services uh, that you've built. But maybe for the English, English people and the people who don't know you, um, who are you and what do you do? <laughs> maybe you introduce me. I introduce you. Okay, who's Raoul Plicat? So you're 28 years old. Yeah. I've been into entrepreneurship for over 10 years now. Yeah. And um, yeah, you became a millionaire when you were 21, 22, something like this. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. Yeah. For the last few years, you have been yeah basically building brands, personal brands, um, kind of like behind the scenes in the German market. <laughs> Uh -huh. And um, yeah, the personal brands are some of the biggest in the German market. You can compare them with, I don't know, Grand Cardone and the English one, Sam Ovens, et cetera, et cetera. And the brands are doing, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 million a year mm -hmm. in the revenue. And uh, yeah, this guy's an entrepreneur, super advanced. Uh, you also started CopeCard, um, a payment provider, a couple of years ago. And uh, what I've seen from the other speeches that you gave, I think one was on stage. Copca got evaluated at uh, 200 million euros or something. Yeah, almost 200 million. Almost 200 yeah. million. Wow, that's crazy. And um, yeah, in general, how would I introduce you? Um, so what I, have to, what I would have to say is, I think you are like one of the people, like we don't know each other like super, super extremely well, but from the content that you put out online and uh, what I can see, um, like you're one of the people that I respect the most and look up to the most. And um, yeah, so it's glad to have you here on the podcast. Nice introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So um, yeah, for the podcast, I'd say let's jump straight into questions and everything. Um, for all the German people, and they probably already know like your story, how you start and everything. And the English ones, um, I will link the podcast that we did like two and a half years ago or something uh, below. Oh um, yeah, 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 we did one, yeah, like in during co Corona. Yeah, I think. COVID. Yeah, exactly. Beginning of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we'll link it below because that's where we went over the story and everything, how you started. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we can get straight into questions. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Um, so first one. Um, so you've achieved a lot by the age of uh, 28, right? And what people, you know, when they see success and uh, when they think about success, like you've achieved it all from mm -hmm. what people, you know, define as success, right? Um, but if you could go back in time and uh, go back to the Raul who's maybe 21, 22, and uh, give that person an advice with the goal to reach the goals that you now have achieved and the level of success you've now reached. Um, like what advice would you give the Raul to reach the goals in maybe half the time or two, three years faster? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, like, first, first of all, like, I don't think like I've reached all the goals. For, for me, success is like not like in terms of uh, any material things or so. Like, I mean, yeah. they're nice to have. and. It's nice to have a nice watch or a nice car, nice apartments, nice lifestyle. But these things come on the side, basically, yeah. when you do like certain things uh, in the right order and, and in a correct way. Um, they should never be the goal. Success should be, first of all, uh, your, that you have peace of mind, basically, that you know that you did your best to become the best version of yourself. Yeah. Uh, that's the most important thing for success, basically, like for, for everything what you what you do like okay um and on the other hand like i have so many things what i'm still looking and going for after i mean like th there's a saying like if you it's better to aim uh to the stars if you want to to go to the moon you know and there's like also with every kind of goal uh, it's better to set yourself like big goals and mm -hmm. then like on the way to it like uh, you reach certain things that like for some people were lifetime goals, but for you, like it was maybe like, just like nice to have. Yeah. So, um, and, um, and yeah, so, so I'm, for me, I'm still, I, I still have a lot of things to do. And like from the goals I have, I'm, I have very big goals and uh, working very hard for them. And I, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm still like close. And in terms of, like maybe of like financial success, or like financial freedom, I definitely did that, um, done that, and uh, and yeah, but but it's not about like only money, you know, like because sure. life gets very fast, very boring, yeah. uh, and um, there's a lot a lot of things like to achieve out there, you know, and that's what I'm looking for. So, what are, for example, some of the things that you are looking for to achieve besides money and everything, mm. building the team, building the company, 
what stuff that you get fulfillment from? Yeah, like, like, like ful fulfillment for me is like basically building or like, uh, first of all, like uh, getting talent, getting the right people mm -hmm. and uh, bring them together and uh, like um, pushing basically like the team and everyone in the team like to bring out the, their best. And, yeah. uh, I, lo I love marketing. Marketing is my passion and therefore like um, that's one big part creating uh, change in marketing with ideas and like in a collective it's always like a great thing and with a great team and I like to do that that's giving me a lot of fulfillment and uh, that's what I do basically right now on the other hand like with uh, software and technology is the other part what I do like uh, changing something in the future is like like also like a huge part and like uh, um, making a big impact, helping basically people like to fulfill their own dreams. And this is like what we do with Cope Card, Cope Member, with the whole Cope universe. Um, helping the creators of today and tomorrow, everyone who's like influencer, streamer on Instagram, on Twitch, on YouTube, like giving them the right tools so they can monetize and materialize what they have in their head. Yeah. And uh, with the new technology, like, and, um, and yeah, that's the other thing. Got it. Okay. For well, the question, like, if you could go back in time, right? Um, are there any things that you would have done differently, or um, yeah, differently, basically? I don't to... think so. No. Uh, I, no, I don't. I don't think so. I, I don't think I would do anything differently, because everything, uh, or because I can just argue from the point where I am right now. Yeah. So and and. Uh, to the point where I'm right now, everything had to happen the exact same way. And since I, and I since I don't know like a better version or, yeah. or, or like, like in theory, like a, a better version of myself, I don't know because I, I just know who I am right now. Um, therefore, I don't know if what could be done differently in this term, but I don't regret anything. I, I, I I, I'm especially thankful for the bad things because they give you the opportunity to learn faster yeah. and becoming better if you accept the challenge. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, so I, I wouldn't change anything. It's a little bit, you know the movie Dark, the series Dark? No. On Netflix? No. Everybody should watch it in terms of like uh, series. Uh, how um, like and, and filming and artistic style like dark is amazing from the plot it's a German series but mm -hmm. it's on Netflix in English um, it, it's amazing okay it, it starts like like um, uh, with like a crime a crime series mm -hmm. that some child got uh, gets missing in the city in Germany in Winden and uh, it turns out like it's a super complex plot about time traveling Okay. Um, and um, the funny thing is like everything has to happen in a certain way where you are right now and everything had to happen in exact that same way. Yeah. And even like with time traveling, it's you couldn't change that. And this is like uh, something about the series. But it's uh, it's also like the example you gave me. So if, we, if I could back in time, I don't know, first of all, what I could change. On the other hand, like I know that a lot of people say like, OK, I would change that. I would do that differently and so on. Maybe one thing, the only thing I'm, that comes to my mind is listening to one of my best friends when he told me first time about Bitcoin and to buy more <laughs> Bitcoin. Seriously. Yeah. But um, and, and that was 2015. I luckily bought Ethereum very early. Yeah. But uh, Bitcoin, when I had the chance, I think it was like $250, $300, like something like that. Yeah. Was when I basically uh, uh, came back from Peter Thiel Fellowship Summit yeah. um, in 2015. That was the first time when I heard about Bitcoin. And uh, that's the only thing that I would change <laughs> by early Bitcoin. But besides that, <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. So maybe the, the question, another, like, the differently framed, right? You couldn't change anything, but what would you say are some of the things, uh, character traits, um, how you approach life and business and your overall world view or however you want to call it, um, a general mindset that have helped you to achieve what you've achieved by mm -hmm. now? 
Yeah, so um, what would I do? Um, or like, um, what helped me basically? I think like, first of all, like you have to like, have discipline when you want to achieve something, right? Uh, you have to have a lot of discipline. You have to um, be focused. Focus is the most important thing. Like I see so many people who jump from uh, one thing to another. Um, you have to focus. You have to focus really hard. Focus is the most important thing. Um, and you need to un understand uh, where or what are opportunities that bring you further and what are just distractions. So you can focus on the opportunities and ignore everything what is a distraction. Um, because, uh, a lot of people think like the grass is on the other, or on the other side is greener. No, no it's not. It's like it's greener where you put water on it, you know. And, uh, and the water in, in this term is focus. Focus on your own things. Um, and uh, and yeah, so discipline, focus. Um, what else? Like I think that these are the most important thing: discipline, and focus, and you have to uh, like you have to be determined. You, like you have to know what you want in life, kinda. And if you don't know what you want in life, like think about what gives, what excites you. You know, like I mean, like it's important to make money first of all, like um, like uh, and also to follow the money. If you have like no money at all, you should follow the money first. But once you reach like basic financial freedom, uh, which I think is very fast and very attainable, and I think you show like a lot of people how to do that and have amazing success stories. Um, like once you have reached that, like it's important like to figure out what is the next step. Yeah. Because just focusing on the money or like spending the money is like it doesn't make uh, you happy. And f uh, most of all, it doesn't make you more successful. Yeah. Like buying more stuff, more LV, more Gucci bags and whatever. Yeah. Doesn't make you more. It's nice to have, you know, but it shouldn't be the only thing that you have. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so focus and discipline. Maybe talking about uh, your typical day. Uh, how many hours a day do you work and what does a typical day look like? Mm. In one of the other podcasts you did, you know, you also said, that you have a lot of routines, yeah. right? And that without routines, you wouldn't be able to perform on the level that you're performing on exactly. now. Exactly, yeah. No, so, so exactly. I, how many times, I mean, like, I think I work like, for me, like every day is work, yeah. but it's like not work that I have to do, but it's like that I want to do. Yeah. I like to work, you know? Yeah. I love to work. Um, so basically every, every hour like i mean like social media for me is also work where I'm, I'm not spending like much time like stalking or like looking for other people but when i post something or so like it, it, it i mean like I, I, there's a reason why i'm i'm, I'm a marketer you know like and, and everything what i put out has a specific person uh, purpose so i don't put things uh, or I, i'm on social media like not for fun but uh, to go after like or, or like to to go after my dreams and also on the other hand like to to create something you know and um and yeah like not to waste time or something like that um and yeah on the other hand like routines i do a lot of sport yeah um i do like i try to sleep enough sometimes at work sometimes it doesn't <laughs> what means enough for you six seven eight hours or uh, six uh, usually six and six and a half hours on Saturdays, I I sleep ten actually. Yeah. Uh, every like this is like the uh, only like like in terms of sleep. Sometimes I, I uh, often I sleep four hours also. Yeah. But because I go at one and to bed and then like at five I'm waking up. Do you wake up already? Huh? At five at five you wake up already. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. And um, sometimes sometimes not. But it uh, happens also. But Fridays, from Friday to Saturday, always 10 hours. Because with the amount of, of gym and, and sport I do, like I, I have to have at least one day where I like, sleep really long and really deep. Yeah. Otherwise, like it's not working. <laughs> God, that makes sense. So is Saturday for you complete day off, or you just sleep 10 hours? No no, the, no, 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 no. I sleep 10 hours. That's the only thing. But like I, I don't need like day off or so, so yeah. something like that. So of course, sometimes there, there are times, of course, where, where I do something with uh, uh, like f for fun or so, but uh, yeah, like uh, depends, you know. Yeah. So when it comes to routines, um, gym. You said another podcast. You do that yeah. twice a day, like once gym and then cardio or yoga or something. Gym and running every day. 
Yeah. And uh, what, one of it at least. Like, I mean, like uh, gym six times per week, one time off. Yeah. And uh, yeah, running also almost every day. Then yoga. Yeah. Any other routines that you have specifically for business and uh, maybe reflection, doing after action reviews? I don't know, morning routine. I remember you said in 2020 or something. Uh, morning routine is uh, bullshit, but uh, do you have something like this? Or? Uh, no, I, I mean, like regarding business, I have like Drew Fix meetings with mm -hmm. uh, leadership. Uh, also routine like from Monday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, usually Thursday and Friday are no drill fixes. So drill fixes are meetings that are coming every week or every other week. Um, with the leadership and uh, C-level and uh, or business partners and then like talking about like what are the next steps and so on and review. Yeah. Yeah. Um, routine definitely so also they are fixed. Yeah, but Thursday, Friday, more time for open work or whatever is just needed, like less schedule, but yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. One of the books that you recommend uh, pretty often on, uh, on podcasts and everything is Psycho-Cybernetics, yeah. right? Why is it one of your favorite books? What do you like about it so much? You know, what do I like about Psycho-Cybernetics is... Uh, basically, uh, or why I recommend it it's, it's so much is because when you read it, like you understand it for the first time, and uh, I think it gives a lot of people like opportunity, and uh, they realize that it's possible for them to change their life 180 degrees. Yeah. Um, and they understand why things happen in their life, how they happened, and also how they can influence it to change it. Yeah. So especially like. Yeah, like that's why I like to recommend it a lot because like people understand it easily. Yeah. And okay. in the end, when I recommend something, people should read it and do something, change it. You know, it doesn't bring so much when I recommend something that is for 99% of the people not useful, you know, and just like 1% maybe can use it. Yeah. Especially like on podcasts or so. Like that's why I like to recommend this book. Okay, got it. <laughs> and in cycle by cybernetics. You know, the author talks a lot about the subconscious brain, yeah. uh, your self-image and everything. Yeah. Um, regarding the subconscious, like, do you do stuff like affirmations, writing down your goals, visualizing or something? And what are your general thoughts on it? I'm, uh, affirmations, not, not really, no. Um, but of course, like, I write things down. Yeah. I think like writing is one of the most important things because it helps you to, it actually it's proven, it's science, yeah. that writing down improves your thinking um, so because you have to think first about what you write down so it helps you massively ordering your thoughts so um, it's science so yeah. I, I like to do what science says <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah and, I, and actually uh, I, I really like to write things down to plan things it gives me clarity it, it helps me strategic wise uh, I like to collect my ideas. I have, I don't know, a lot of notebooks, filled notebooks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Okay. Next cool. steps, to-do lists. Yeah. Also, like, uh, like I said, like I like to really to write my to-dos not into a phone or an app. I hate that actually because I don't know. It it, it makes the task less enjoyable. Okay. So wh when you write things down, you have to write them down. You have to make a little bit of effort and therefore like when you achieve this task or when you can when you did it and then you cross it through it's like uh, it yeah. releases more dopamine you know and it makes it, it makes the next task easier to do yeah so so yeah that's that's what what i like to do okay got it <laughs> and uh, you said earlier you like to recommend books that are useful for 99 percent what are some of the books that you wouldn't normally recommend on uh, uh, podcast <laughs> I knew this question would come <laughs> when I when I finish the sentence. So, mm, what books? Uh, good to great. Okay. Is I think a, a great business book. Um, another book from the same author is um, How the Mighty Fall. Okay. And this, and this is I think especially like good book for somebody who already reached some success. And because like no success is never ending you know like success is because you did a certain steps in a certain way 
But now, you started here, you did certain steps, and now you're here. But there's no guarantee that you first of all stay here and not go back. Because things are changing outside. 90% of the things that happens are outside of your control. So you have constantly adjust and adapt. Our life is actually the proof that if you don't adapt, you die. It's, it's a reason for a business. It's a reason for a person. If you don't adapt in life, you eventually will die. If, you, if you're, your body adapts automatically, if you go to a hot climate, your body adapts. If you wouldn't adapt, your body would die. Yeah. You, you would die, actually. Your body does it automatically. But uh, with outside circumstances, you also have to adapt. And same also your business. If you reach some level of success, you have to adapt. And that means also that you cannot do the same things over and over and over and accept and expect the same results all the time. So there's a saying, you grow or you die with your business. So like, you cannot stay flat. You, cannot, you have to grow, you have to uh, become better in order like, to, to survive also. And that's especially true in business. So like this book, How the Mighty Fall is, I think is a very, very good book. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make sense like to read it when you're just starting out because there is more important stuff. Um, but if you are really like, I don't know, like you do like at least like one, two, three million, four million dollars per year, then you should definitely read this book because now you have like usually responsibility, you have employees. And um, sometimes like when great success comes, you can also fall very fast because you start to ignore like reasoning. You think like you're like touched by meter, meters and uh, everything what you basically touch, everything will become to gold. And that's also like a lot of mistakes that a lot of entrepreneurs do. Actually, they achieve some success in mm -hmm. some field and then they think like everything else what they will do like will become gold. So they start like start spending money on real estate, start investing in this startup, start investing in that startup, writing checks everywhere. So um, buying real estate, like too much with too many banks, over leveraged. What happens 2008, for example, everybody, everybody was, was buying, 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 then crash, and then what? Yeah. What are some of the other mistakes, you know, you said uh, a couple of minutes ago, mistakes. Uh, that you see entrepreneurs doing who have reached uh, a specific level of success, maybe 500k a year, million, two million, three million, uh, within this whole online space. Well, like, like, like mis mistakes basically are the wrong actions, and this is, uh, depends on the context. Like, for example, if you, I don't know, if you do 500k and you want to stay at 500k, which I don't recommend, but then like there's like maybe not so many mistakes, you know, but if you, for example, you do 500K and you want to reach 1 million then you continuously are at the plateau, like it can have many reasons, you know, like I think most or like one of the most common reasons is like that you don't have the right processes, that uh, you neglect culture in your company. Mm -hmm. Culture is super important, that you don't hire enough, um, that you don't hire the right people, that you're, that you're afraid of spending money on people, on the right people especially, that uh, people don't f focus on growing and nurturing talent, so mm -hmm. like training the talent and helping them basically have a great career. Mm -hmm. um, they are just focused on the company then, saying like make money, make money, make, make money, and therefore they lose talent. And therefore, they lose opportunity to even greater potential, you know. So um, there are a lot of m kind of mistakes you can make. It depends on the context. It depends what you want to reach, basically. Yeah, let's say if someone is within the personal branding space, coaching, consulting space, uh, or service space, um, is making a million, two or three a year, and wants to scale past 10 million, 15 million, 20 million, 30 million a year, what would you say are the things to, to focus on? and mistakes to maybe avoid that you made uh, throughout your journey? Mm. 
example, I mean like, thankfully I didn't make, I think many big mistakes um, in this kind of terms, like things that were really mistakes. But on the other hand, like if you want to grow from, from three to 10 million, basically it's, uh, it's a lot of processes and uh, one of the biggest thing, basi uh, first of all, is like, is kind of like communication uh, or the communication of your service, like having like a big idea, like you have to stand out usually like to, to grow from three million to 10 million in your market, especially as a personal brand. So, okay. so you, you have to really stand out, you have to have one big idea which you communicate. And the big idea is basically part of your company DNA. So what you stand for, what values you, rep you represent and what benefits you provide to your audience, to your target group. And this is something that you have to communicate. And um, in order to get what? Attention. Yeah. So attention is the new most important currency. So you have to have attention if you want to go from three to 10 million. Attention is the most important thing and you can only get attention with a big idea. So, and the big idea, like, like one idea, basically what does this big idea, now that's the most important part, is you get mental availability. Yeah. Mental availability, what is that? What is mental availability? It's basically real estate in the collective brain of your target audience, okay? When you brush your teeth, what are you, or like when you need tooth, toothpaste, what are, what are you thinking of when I say toothpaste? What's the first Colgato. thing? Colgato. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Colgato, maybe Almex, maybe some other brand. Whatever brand you were thinking first of has the most mental availability. It basically owns the real estate in your brain. Okay. Yeah. When you think about uh, a certain product, service, burger, what are you thinking of? Which brand? McDonald's. McDonald's. Some people <laughs> would say Burger King. So whatever. People who say Burger King, therefore, Burger King did a better job than McDonald's to reach these kind of people. Yeah. And if you say McDonald's, McDonald's did a better job to rent the space in your brain. Yeah. So this is what you get with attention, okay? And this is what you have to do. But in order to get this to, to long-term rent the space, you have to have a big idea. And um, there are certain things, for example, there are certain rules. So for example, energy drink, what are you thinking of? Red Bull. Exactly. So it, it helps when you are a first mover like when there's like nobody in the market and you're the first one and you do a really good job like Red Bull did. Yeah. Red Bull were not the very first, but Red Bull were the first one in the Western world and they managed to keep the status. So Red Bull, eight billion, nine billion dollars revenue. They managed to get the attention, to keep the attention. And then they have the big idea, okay? that uh, energy drink, you think about Red Bull. The benefit is you, if you're tired, you have kind of like more energy, more performance basically, okay? So, people think about this product, they buy this product, the product delivers, it gives reputation, people start to talk about it, and that's how you dominate basically your category. Yeah. Same with, for example, let's talk about watches. Rolex. Rolex is still like the greatest luxury brand there are. I mean, like there are Audemars Piquet, Richard Mille, Patek Philippe, Vacheron, a lot of brands. But Rolex like is the entry level luxury watch. Everybody wants to have it. I mean, like everyone has it, yeah. like not uh, also collectors. Everybody is a fan of that. And Rolex, it's like status. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you're a brand like 
you have to have a big idea. Then you have to deliver on that idea. And um, that's how you can move from basically from any level what you have. Also companies from 50 million to 500 to 100 million. Um, it depends basically what is the, you're, you're, you're capped basically with your target audience, with the size of your market. And the big idea is really an idea that pen penetrates more than 10%, 20% of the market. So you go through and get a big, big chunk. You become one of the top two players in the market, either number one or number two. But this is why you have to have a big idea because without it, like you never get it. So there's a lot of things how you can optimize your business strateg uh, strategically with processes. So you can improve the onboarding process. You have now onboarding training for every employee with Scope member, for example. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so every new employee that comes into your company gets trained very fast, you know? And this is also one thing that Cope member does amazingly well. Uh, you, you hire somebody new and within like three, uh, four weeks, this person is upskilled because he has a great onboarding experience. Okay. This is very important, by the way. But on the other hand, you can also like increase your revenue by, I don't know, making new campaigns to existing clients. Maybe you make 10, 20% more revenue per year by doing that. You do more flash sales, Black Friday campaigns, Halloween campaigns. You maybe increase your revenue 30% in addition. Like you build more automations, okay? You hire one or two more people, okay? But this is just like adding up. And a big idea is the leverage that triples, quadruples your revenue. While normal business processes, they increase the revenue over time and it takes time and it takes longer. But a big idea, if it hits, yeah. it's like that. It's a new dimension. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the, so that's the secret, basic secret kind of like. You have to think creatively how you can stand out, how you can deliver this idea, rent the mental availability in your target audience. Yeah. Okay, got it. So big idea, of course, improving systems and processes. You said company culture is super, super important. Yes. Um, hiring the right people, spending money, time, uh, and everything, training the right people, the employees, and making sure that they have the potential to grow within the company. And um, those are the main things you would focus on. Yes. Yeah. With the big focus on developing and creating a big idea where you can gain more mental awareness or mental space of your targeted audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, got it. So earlier in the interview, you also talked about that you've had uh, big challenges, uh, maybe failures in the past, whatever you want to call it. What were some of the challenges that you've had and that you've grown the most from? and where you gained the most experience that you say, hey, this was important and this has helped me a lot. Where did you say it in the podcast? Oh, early on this one. Ah, on, the, on this one. Uh, okay, um, yeah, like, and I mean like uh, certain kind of challenge, uh, like uh, challenges basically in terms of things where you don't know the answer. like some unexpected experiences in your life or in your business life. You don't know what to do right now because think some things didn't turn out, out as planned. Yeah. You had no control over it, it happens. Um, yeah, I mean like one of the, I mean like for example, one of the challenges was one of the challenges was that uh, with uh, Dirk Kreuter, like a German sales trainer, something like Grand Cadone in Germany, um, also investor. And um, he wanted, or, or like we wanted to launch a book. We had success basically like um, at that time, like I sold within 48 hours more than 10,000 tickets for a live event. Like he had like eight live events um, for the next year. And we made a flash say kind of like for his birthday. 
yeah. and within 48 hours, like with the help of Facebook, I managed to sell the whole event for the next year out, completely out. We had to open even extra spaces, gone. Um, because it was a big idea and it was not seen in the market before. So two things, and then I realized after like the first two or three hours, like because people were buying a lot and the target was 1000 tickets. Yeah. So that was achieved, I think within four hours or so, or five hours. And then I saw here's the opportunity. Yeah. And I stopped doing everything else. I canceled all the meetings for the next few days. And I just put the focus, what I mentioned earlier, on that thing. Yeah. And I didn't sleep. And I just focused on spending, improving campaign. I was thinking, how can I, we had one video where the big idea was presented. The market didn't know it. And the key question, my, my key question, uh, or first of all, I was thinking, okay, how can I sell now more? Um, because after four hours, the target was achieved. We could stop now, but yeah. I was like, we have a run and we have still like uh, 44 hours left. So yeah. what can I do? And then I was thinking like, okay, well, what do I need to do? Like, and uh, it's called there. Uh, I, I like to work with mental models. Mental models helps you like basically to understand the world and make better decisions. One of the one of one mental model is first principle thinking. So it's about going to the root cause. What is the ultimate truth? What is the ultimate essence of something? In this case, what is the, what is the ultimate truth of selling? the most ticket I can do. And what is basically making the sales here? And I figured out it's the video. Yeah. So I narrowed it down, like not, some of you might know of Facebook ads. It's not about conversions. It's not about clicks. I narrowed it down, like all what I need to do is like m present the video in front of the right audience because I looked at all the KPIs and I saw the video was great it has a, had a great view rate and then use it. People who watch like more than one minute, two minutes of the video, they would buy. So all I needed was video views. And I knew at that time, or like I, I calculated then, I figured it out, it was a process, breaking it down after the first four, four hours. I broke it down and I figured out that one, one video view brought in 15 cents and it cost me three cents to, to buy one. So I had around 12 uh, cents gross profit after advertising costs. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot. So I, all what I focused on after that for the next days was like putting or uh, scaling basically the video views in front of the right audiences. And then like, where can I get more views from? Where can I? presents this video more because the video got attention. It converted the attention to customers and it was hugely profitable. It was a big idea. People were loving it. People were buying into the DNA of the brand. That was a challenge, but the bigger challenge came afterwards because now, like, why stop? We sold out everything. And then that's the challenge, what I said, basically, what's, what comes after it? Like, don't rest on your success because otherwise you would go down again. Like, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to build like, we are now here. We have momentum. Uh, we are in motion. And uh, there's a Newton law, uh, Newton's law of, of motion, an object that is in motion, stays in motion, basically. And I wanted to stay in motion. I wanted to, to go on. Okay. Yeah. So that was a challenge then. And I figured out let's, we need a book now. Yeah. Okay. We need a book. And uh, that was exactly six years ago, uh, September. Then end of September, 1st of October. And then I was like, okay, like in, on 24th of November, we have Black Friday. And uh, that's six weeks, six weeks to write a book, print the book, sell the book. Yeah. And that was a bigger challenge because no sleep, basically. Uh, and then like writing a book, we wrote the book, we designed the book, we printed the book, we distributed 
test books basically to customers to get feedback and social proof. Yeah. We filmed video campaigns, marketing campaigns, another big idea. And then on the 24th, everything went well and we started to sell and within one week we sold 40,000 books. Oh, wow. On that. And now like we sold more than 500,000 books in, our, uh, in six years. Yeah. Um, but that was a way bigger challenge because you build success and then like you have to have the discipline because you get also a lot of money, you got a lot of big paycheck was nice. But to ignore all that, to not like celebrate, but went back, right back into work and figure out an even bigger challenge because like we were here, we managed to get here and then we wanted to get here and it was a very short period of time, which is also good because it gives pressure. Yeah. So we pressured, pressured, pressured. And that was a bigger challenge because there were so many unknown how to write a book. Okay. In one day, basically. Yeah. F figured that out. Okay. And now like you have to proofread the book. And then like uh, a lot of things happened unforeseen, like the, the lector, he took longer than expected. Uh, the proofreader and like, and so on. And then we, we decided it's okay when there's like 80% it's okay. 20% like they were like in the first edition, there were a lot of spelling, not, not a lot of spelling mistakes, but like some things that were hard to understand yeah. or wrong grammar. But anyway, we put it out and nobody complained about after it's maybe one, one or two persons yeah. out of 40,000 sold books. Sometimes also like perfection can get into your way. But we were aware about that, that why, why we made the decision, fuck it, basically, yeah. and go for it. Um, anyway, we, we made sure we had a great product, okay? But yeah, then like also like figuring out like how this book has to be structured, okay? So like um, people can understand the message, basically. So I made the decision to make the book as, uh, I was thinking what, what are the easiest to consume books this is like comic books, yeah. like small ones. They usually have an average size of 140 pages. So that's why our book on the end had, had 140 pages. And now all the books in the German market that are free plus shipping are also 140 pages. You know? yeah. And um, I made sure that every other uh, page basically had a picture also like to make it easy to consume because our target audience were not people who like to read books but people basically who want to get into the idea of selling, improving their lives. And I had to br make them basically read this book. So that's why everything what you see in the, inside the book is as a perp made by purpose. Yeah, then designing the book was also a challenge. We did this, I think like in four or five days. Then printing took around two to three weeks. Yeah. Then at the same time, we, we wrote scripts for the videos, for the pre-launch sequence, timed everything, built the landing pages, wrote the copy. Um, and yeah, and then like we delivered and then like started the ads, had a great pre-launch phase and then like launch phase. Yeah. And yeah, and that was like, like the challenge because like I said, so many unforeseen events. Also printing took longer than expected. But on the other hand, it was planned into the plan, basically. Yeah. I calculated with that. So it, a lot of things or success at the end of the outcome of what you want is also how you plan. It's the most important thing. And um, another thing that I, that I basically, another mental modeling is like reverse engineering. So what I used before is like, I was thinking what has to go wrong actually to have a fucked up launch. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I started at the end, like, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, like the main launch video is not ready. Uh, email server is broken down. Uh, email tool is not working, landing page tool and so on. And then I calculated on this is what I still do. And then I calculated what is the risk factor of that happening? Okay. Very important if you plan a project event, every, anything. What is the risk factor that, for example, on that certain day, landing page service or the tool used for, for landing pages breaks down? What is the actual percentage, the reason for that? Maybe 20%, 10%, okay. 
But what is the factor that, for example, the video doesn't get ready? What has to be happened before that? Um, wrong planning and or like the, the cutter takes more time than he expects, which usually always happens. So like you have to adjust and then plan more time for it. Same with the printing. I knew that the, or I expected that the printing will take more time than they told us. Yeah. Um, so I planned like basically like one more week to it, but I communicated back to the people like we have, this is the deadline. Like the deadline was basically uh, the eighth. I planned that the, my own deadline was the 17th of November. And then they told us, yeah, it will only arrive on the 11th or 12th. Is this okay? And we're so sorry. And like, it's absolutely not okay. Work harder, work faster. You know, they managed to break it down, like to deliver it on the 10th or so. But for me personally, I was calm because I calculated the worst thing. Yeah. What can happen is basically the 17th. Yeah. So like it gives you also more peace of mind. You are better prepared. It's, and that's again, like what I say about challenges, like it's how you, how you expect them basically, how you face them, how you face basically everything in life. And like you can also say like personal challenges also like how, how well are you prepared in the end for the challenges, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, got it. And do you, when it comes to reaching a new level and growing or in business and growing as a person, do you actively always go out and find and search for those uh, new challenges? Because I remember in another talk, you also said like, hey, like I'm always looking for a new challenge or creating new challenges for myself so I can grow as a person, become a better version of myself. Exactly. And uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for, for sure, for sure. I mean like, uh, I mean like uh, in this world, like, uh, your life is what you have between birth and death. So that's all what you have. So there should be no time where you should actually be bored. Yeah. Literally, like no time because you only got this life once. And um, all this time, that's my personal opinion, is like, it's like, it's, uh, you're here like to develop yourself, not to stay the same. So. If you're bored, then like look for a new challenge. But if you face something or if you master one thing and you're done, like figure out something else what excites you basically. Yeah. Because like there's no time to waste, right? There's no time to waste. You don't know when it ends, but when it ends, you should be ready to say like, that's it. I tried my best. I gave my best. I become my best. There's like no regrets. Yeah. Because like in the end, like, uh, there's like two persons you should make proud your eight year old version of yourself and your 88 year old version of yourself kind of like maybe you become 50 40 but when, as long as you're on the way you're busy with becoming a better version of yourself with with constant iteration of yourself i think like it's a fulfilled life and something to be proud of and something like this is what can be also as work as an example for others and improve like Make, like uh, whoever knows what your impact is on the world. You know, maybe you might inspire a child that becomes, I don't know, somebody who saves the world one day from plastic or so. Who yeah. knows? Okay, got it, cool. Uh, one more last question. What can we expect from you and the companies you're building? For example, Copecart within the next couple of years and what in general uh, are your plans and maybe even goals that you still have for yourself? Earlier you said you haven't even started, you're just getting started. Um, yeah, so maybe some of that. Oh, well, I mean, like, uh, we want to create tools for the creator economy and the creator economy is like, I think most people can will counting on that who are like watching, for example, of your audience, especially. And, um, and yeah, like we want to provide tools that make things easier. Um, so you can basically live from your ideas, you know, because in the end, I grew up with a bicycle, with city rollers, with a GameCube, with Game Boy Color. Um, but I also like, I know the first few years of my childhood were like where we didn't have those things and we're still playing in the forest, you know. But I think like that's a good mix of both worlds and, uh, and uh, that uh, our generation, uh, or our generations, um, they're very creative. And I think they, uh, I mean, like 
a few years ago it was like that uh, or, or like let's say before 2008 it was very hard like to earn your money on the internet then the iphone came and with the iphone it was the next revolution basically that uh, influencers came people could earn money on on the you know, on the internet um, we had shopify then online shops uh, we have instagram so many opportunities it's about the right tool and the access because of the iphone uh, the access to more and more, or like it, it was a change basically where uh, before no almost no no one had access with his phone to the internet it was very expensive the iPhone was a new tool basically and that made the iteration that internet got cheaper and more accessible to everyone and therefore like new complete new industries grew over time yeah and um, that's definitely something that we want to achieve with CopeCard and Cope, that we make it very easy like for creators to materialize their ideas and visions. Yeah. So maybe for the, for the ones watching who don't know what CopeCard is, uh, you maybe want to explain it really fast and uh, for who CopeCard is? Well, CopeCard is basically for, for anyone who wants to sell stuff or sell his services yeah. uh, online and uh, once, once you have a tool that makes basically doing business easier. Because business means also analytics, KPIs, who are your best customers? You can grow your business only effectively if you know your customer lifetime value. How much is a customer life uh, worth over lifetime? So for example, Starbucks, the average customer lifetime value for a Starbucks customer is $12,000. And the lifetime is 20 years. So, uh, so Starbucks knows they can spend $700 on one customer now, okay, and he buys a latte for $5. So technically they're in minus, but they know that this is an average customer. Yeah. So he will stay 20 years now from the first time he visited his store and will spend over this 20 years $12,000. And because it's an average, per, it's just the average customer. There are customers who spend way more, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And there are customers who spend less. They spend maybe over twenty years, maybe five hundred bucks or one thousand bucks. Okay. But he's average, and this is you have to work also as a business with the law of average. So they know the customer lifetime value, and they, and they know like the next year and the next year over the next years they will make a lot of money. Way more than the seven hundred dollars that they spend. Yeah. And this is true for every business. For McDonald's, McDonald's offers chips and uh, uh, or like fries uh, and uh, small Coke, big Coke, because they know the customer lifetime value and they know that it will increase uh, their profit, basically. And so this is something what CopeCard figures out uh, figures out automatically. So you get just displayed from all your transactions what is the customer lifetime value. And you get your data automatically segmented. Well, who are your best customers? Who are like your customers who only bought time but have high potential to buy more? Yeah. And you, uh, for, for them, you make a retargeting campaign or an email campaign very easily. And what you do, you increase your, your, your revenue by 20, 30, 40, 50 percent. You double it just by knowing the right numbers. So CopeCut basically makes doing online business easier besides yeah. saving time with VAT collection and invoicing and uh, and uh, giving you access directly to uh, multiple, like Apple Pay, Android Pay, Google Pay, credit card, PayPal, at once without you risking your accounts and so on. And it saves time. It's yeah. intuitive. Within two minutes, you can register and you can start selling, um, which is a big USP. But in the end, it's, it comes about making business simple, which is important in the end, like because as a creator, as somebody like uh, who has a service or something, you should focus on what you're really good at. If you do consulting, if you do online business, whatever you do, if you're an agency, you should focus on delivering the work and spend less time on understanding how business works. If there are tools, basically, who can give you like, or helps you increase your revenue very easily. Yeah, yeah. and that's what Copa does. That's what CopeCard does, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we'll put the link down below. Thank you. The US version is available by now. Yes. And um, yeah, we're also using it for our business to sell other services, offers, products that we yeah. have. 
amazing tool so far. Thank you. And um, trying to become better all the time. <laughs> yeah. What are the plans for CopeCard? Cope member, we spoke about it earlier. Yeah. So, so, so Cope member, we launched onboarding trainings or like membership areas for for your clients. Also, Cope member. Um, that's what we're working on. There are coming few updates. I told you already privately, but I can't announce it here yet. <laughs> um, coming. Uh, CRM is coming. Also, um, we build and we are building also a uh, very nice app. There, there's not so much I want to talk about. I want success makes a noise. Yeah. But we are working very hard in the background and very fast, and we have a huge team, and uh, even growing further. So yeah, that's what's coming. Cool. I'm excited to see what's yeah. coming. And um, yeah, Raul, thanks for taking the time for the podcast. Thank you. It was Nicholas. nice. Thank you. And um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ciao. <laughs>